Hi everyone, so now we have enough objects defined so that I can tell you what a random variable is. So assume that we have, this is going to be a definition, assume that we have a measure space, omega f, given, okay, so this is given, a function which I will denote by x from omega to r is measurable on this measure space function is measurable if the following is true so take any Borel set on r so b of r is the Borel sigma algebra as defined before Take anything from there and look at the pre-image of that set by the function. This must belong to the sigma algebra f. Okay, that's what measurable means. So here is r, and then you can take any Borel set, for example, in this example, just two intervals. Okay, and then here is the sample space omega. The function goes from omega to r and you try to find out what is, what is the set of points in omega which is mapped to the picture is a bit funny which is mapped into into your Borel set b here for example this union of two intervals you want to find out <coughs> which is the set here that goes into these two intervals okay and this set is a subset of omega if for every Borel set here this subset of omega belongs to the sigma algebra then we say that the function x is measurable okay definition if you have a probability space now so if omega f and p is a probability is a probability space then we call a random variable simply a measurable function on it okay then a random variable on this probability space omega fp is simply a measurable function okay so random variables are nothing else but measurable functions now what I want to explain to you now is why this definition makes sense and how we can use it to actually talk about probability and here is how it's going to work okay so assume that you have a random variable as in this setup and you want to ask the following question what is the probability that my random variable <coughs> belongs to a certain set and this set of course needs to be measurable in the Borel Sigma algebra these are the questions you can ask for example let me just uh, in parallel put here an example for example B could be the interval minus infinity and 5 in which case we're asking about the probability that x belongs to the interval minus uh, infinity 5 in other words is smaller than or equal to 5 this is a meaningful question right now what does that actually mean that means that these values of the function the values of the function oops i guess it's the wrong color i used this color before that the values of the function belong to the set B. In other words, I want to find out the probability of the subset of omega which makes this function x. Think, think about x for a moment as a function which brings this function x into the Borel set B. So if I want to be more precise, I'm asking the following question. What is the probability of those sets, of those uh, points in omega? What is the probability of this set? 
of points in omega such that x is taking those points into the Borel set B. That's the true question for, about this. Okay, that, that's, the, that's, the, that's what this question means. x equals to uh, x in B means what's the probability of those points which are taken into B. In this example, x more than or equal to 5, we are asking about the probability of all those omegas which make this function x of omega take a value up to 5. Okay, that's the example when b is the interval minus infinity and 5. And you can further transform this a little bit more. You could say we're looking for the probability of the set of omegas such that omega belongs to the inverse image of x. Uh, in inverse inverse image under x of b okay in other words you're simply asking about omegas uh, well you're simply asking about the probability of the inverse image i don't need to say anything more the inverse image under x of b that's what you're really asking about and now if i want to uh, proceed with this example here, you're think, simply asking about the probability of the x inverse image of the interval minus infinity 5 here. Okay, so why does that make sense? Here's, the, here's where all this story comes together. Why does it make sense? So b is something from the Borel sigma algebra. Okay, x is a measurable random uh, measurable function so let me just go back for a second to the definition we had here. If b is a, in the Borel sigma algebra, x is a random variable, so it's measurable. That means that x inverse of b belongs to the sigma algebra on the probability space omega fp. If it belongs to the sigma algebra, then it makes sense to ask about the probability of x inverse b, because this thing here by the definition of a random variable and the definition of b, this thing here, this set, is actually in the sigma algebra. And anything in the sigma algebra I can ask the probability of. So it makes sense to talk about the probability at x inverse b, <coughs> the, the probability of this set, because this guy here is in the sigma algebra. So when I ask this simple question from probability 1, What's the probability at x is more than or equal to 5? What I'm really asking about is what is the probability of all those omegas which bring this function from the probability space to the interval minus infinity 5? Okay? Now, most often you will not think about uh, random variables this way and keep thinking about x as a random number more than or equal to 5 because that's a very good and intuitive way of thinking about it. However, <coughs> in this is the theory behind it. This is the, the proper mathematical definition of a random variable and the proper mathematical definition of this abbreviation saying that x is more than or equal to 5. Okay, So that's how all this measure theoretic stuff comes together. Now, just a, a side remark. If I have a measurable random variable x, and then if I take any nice function of it, like for example any continuous function, it stays measurable. So if I, for example, look at a measurable random variable x, phi of x with a nice function phi will also be measurable. And again, I don't want to go very much into the details here. This is also measurable. Okay, if you have two random variables x and y, you can of course add them or subtract them, y minus x, or multiply them, or divide them, or do a lot of other things. Essentially, again, anything practical you want to do with random variables, they will also be measurable. Okay, so measurability is a nice notion. In practical terms, <coughs> it's a, 
it's uh, it's essentially very hard to make things non-measurable. So whatever you want to ask in everyday life will will pretty much work. And if you want to, if you have a sequence of random variables, for example, if uh, x n is a sequence of random variables, and for every omega, so let me write it here. If for every omega, x n of omega converges to some function, so you have pointwise convergence to x omega, then this will also be measurable. So if this happens, then goes to infinity, if this exists, then the function x is also measurable. So, in other words, if you have the limit of random variables, that is going to be a random variable as well, if that limit exists for all omega. Okay? So, measurability is a nice uh, property, and you can do the usual things, a lot of things which you are used to, with random variables, and you keep getting a random variable.